I'm Eric Russell, and I'm out and about at Richmond Triangle Players with Tom Judson. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, Eric. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being here and being with us here. Absolutely, my pleasure. So, Can Ham, mm -hmm. it's pretty much your story? Yes. Pretty much the past 20 years of my life up till now. Now, you at age 42 decided to go into the porn business because people are going, why does he look like Gus Maddox? <laughs> because he is. Well, as I recount in the show, I actually, um, yes, I am also known as Gus Maddox. I was uh, discovered by Gigi LaRue okay. when I was on tour with the show uh, uh, 42nd Street okay. in Minneapolis. Because you started doing Broadway shows and yes. composing yeah. stuff. And you were in Cabaret. I was in Cabaret, um, both on tour and on Broadway. And who did you play in Cabaret? I was uh, one of the swings, okay. which is uh, one of the people who covers all the chorus parts. Right. But in cabaret, that also means covering a lot of different but, yeah. instruments. Because you play nine different instruments. Yeah, actually, I think there's 12 altogether. There's 12 right now? Stage. There's 12. Yeah. There's 12. Okay. Now, in cabaret, did you have a favorite Sally Bowles? Um, well, uh, I, I thought the best Sally Bowles that I worked with was Gina Gershon. She was what I sort of pictured Sally Bowles to be like. She was nuts, right? <laughs> but um, I also worked with Brooke Shields, okay. and before I met Brooke, her reputation is she's the nicest person in show business. Well, it turns out Brooke Shields is the nicest there person in show business, <laughs> so it was actually a great pleasure to work with her. They, they all worked, I mean, I worked with a whole bunch of them, they were all terrific in different ways, but, but I thought Brooke was the nicest, and I thought Gina Gershon was the, 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 the closest to what I pictured the role to be. Okay. Out of all the shows you've done, Besides Cabaret and 42nd Street, do you have a favorite performance or favorite show or character you played on, on stage? Oh, gosh. I mean, most of the shows that I've done you wouldn't know because they're little off-off Broadway things. The, the, the character of Tom Judson is... Okay. <laughs> it's a challenge. It's, it's very interesting playing oneself on stage. Because, of course, it is my story. Right. But it has to be theatrical, so it's... I have to play the onstage version of Tom Judson. It's, it's, it's really interesting when my director and I were, were putting it together. We really had to do some exploring to figure out how does one portray oneself. Oh, it was really interesting. How did the whole thing get started? Did you just sit down and go, I want to do a show about me? Or just, where did you decide like this? Well, it's a very happen. long story. I'll see if I can make it as concise as possible. I went broke. Okay. I, was, I was flipping houses in, the, in, the, uh, in upstate New York where I live, and the stock market, the, the real estate market collapsed mm -hmm. along with everything else. And I went totally broke, and I thought, okay, well, it's time to do something else. And I found this little camper, a 1958 camper that I restored. Okay. And I thought, oh, it would be fun to travel around the country in this, just see what comes up. And I played the accordion, and I thought, oh, I'll bring the accordion with me. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll like get a night at the gay bar in town. Mm -hmm and see if I can tell some of these crazy stories that I have from working in porn and other things. And then it was like a light bulb went off, and it's like, oh, that's the one-man show that everyone's been telling me I need to write. So I, uh, I went away to a little island in the Caribbean, <laughs> it's true, and wrote, wrote the play. And that's how it came about. Now, you've toured this round, and this play itself has kind of grown and evolved. Very much so, yeah. To the, what we're, they're going to see in a couple nights mm -hmm. here at Richmond Triangle Players. Um, you think P-Town, where else? Uh, I played L.A., um, a few places around, small places around New York, Poughkeepsie. Okay, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Poughkeepsie. I uh, played New York twice, actually, different versions of the show. Um, I think I'm leaving out, oh, I'm Key West. Okay. I went to Cancun with an Atlantis event. But this is the first time that I've toured the full-length complete version of Can Ham. So it sort of feels like a one man, here's some bits and pieces, you've added stuff, taken stuff out, and now this is this is the show? Yeah, this is the show. When, when I did it in March in New York, we had a month long run and we really worked on it and really set the show. And so this is the first time that it's been done anywhere besides New York in its complete version. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yay, we like that here. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm actually excited to, uh -huh. to do it somewhere else. Now you've got 12 different <laughs> instruments here. Um, did you study music? beforehand, or how did you get to learn all these different... Well, I studied music in as much as everybody studies. Okay. Everybody learns the notes of the staff. Right. With me, it just clicked. I just have this natural affinity for music. And I learned trumpet in fifth grade, and then a couple years later, 
I wanted to play clarinet, but okay. they wouldn't let me in school, so I just taught myself because my sister had one. Okay. And then those two instruments, one's a brass, one's a woodwind, yeah. they just sort of spread out to the rest, and I sort of picked, picked everything else up on my own. So is the accordion your favorite, or which one's your well, favorite? Well, the piano's my main instrument, okay. for sure. The accordion may be my favorite, though. There's something about the accordion. It's a great sight gag, but when you hear the accordion played really well, not that I played the accordion really well, but it's a really fantastic thing. It's you laugh at first, but then you because you really get into it. It's really Who gets into play the accordion. I like decide one day I want to play the accordion. But usually, most people are forced to when okay. they're kids. <laughs> but that wasn't the case with me. I, I found one at a Salvation Army and, and uh, thought, wow, that could be kind of fun. Now you've composed music yeah, for various heard. things like mm -hmm. MTV. I think it's Sesame Street. Yes. <laughs> what did you write for Sesame Street? Because you're going, okay, come on. I wrote uh, William Wegman, who does he does these little videos with his Weimar and her dogs. Okay. I worked on a video with him. A whole bunch of different little segments. One that I actually do in the show. Okay. Called the Milk Song. Ooh. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Sesame Street. They might know it. They probably do. Like they might also know Drew the Moo Cow. Drew the Moo Cow is a big hit. That's a big hit. What other songs and things have you composed that you're like, oh, that's my favorite project I worked on? Because I saw like Nickelodeon, I saw... Yeah, I, I, I've, for a while I was um, writing independent movie scores, okay. which I love doing. Of course, they paid the least. Right. In fact, sometimes nothing. I wrote the score to the movie Metropolitan that okay. Stillman directed. Um, there was there's this independent movie called Good Money that was never released. It's just a terrific movie, very funny, and... That that was probably my favorite composing job in terms of in terms of movies. But I've I've written so many things for for different people. Lisa Crone, the okay. playwright, who's also a performer, and Magnuson, I've written okay. for her. Lots of different things. But um, I, I I guess probably my own little musicals that I used to write. They were the things that I enjoyed the most. Now the title of the show was Canned Ham. How did you pick Canned Ham? Just what did you? Well, it was actually. It was like it was handed to me on a platter. This camper that I mentioned, mm -hmm. I, I found it at a, at a barnyard down the road from my house. It was completely abandoned yeah. and just mouse ridden and everything. And I bought it for a hundred dollars, <laughs> and it was barely worth a hundred dollars. Yeah. And the guy that I bought it from, the, the guy who owned the, it, was filled with junk. This barnyard, and I was giving him the hundred dollars, and I said, "Yeah, I love these campers." He said, "You know, the nickname for this style of camper is the canned ham." And it was like, boom. There it is. It just came to me. And the, I, I all, always wondered if he had not said that at that time, if you and I would be sitting here today. Having because, this whole conversation. Because that name just had so many connotations, and, you know, because I'm a big ham. So that's how this name came about. It's sort of, I like to say it's the Swiss Army knife <laughs> of titles, because it refers to so many things. There you go. There's also several different references within the show. When the whole show is said and done, and having gone through the process of writing and rewriting this, what did you discover about yourself in the process of creating the show that's about you? About me? I... Oh gosh, that's a really tough... You're going to have to edit out some pauses here. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody's ever asked me that question before. Um, well, it sounds like I'm sort of changing the subject, but I'm not. What I found out that as unique and specific as my story is, and there are lots of weird, crazy things that have happened in my life, every time I've done the show, somebody comes up to me and says, oh my God, I went through that exact same thing. And so what I discovered was that this story, while it's very specific, is also universal. That was a really nice thing to discover. Do you have a favorite song from the show? Well, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I do actually. Well, yeah, I'll. Okay, my favorite song. It's I. There are a couple of things that I wrote okay. in the show, and one is a song that was used in Metropolitan just as an instrumental, okay. and I perform that number and I that's when I play all the instruments during that one song. At the same time or from going from one to the okay. next. And then I sit down at the piano and actually sing the song. Oh, cool. And it's uh, it's 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 very fun. It was it was
probably the most challenging part of the show to get together, figure out how to do it, and then for me personally to get from one instrument to the next, and as you know, because I orchestrated it also and, and recorded the tape that goes on to it. So it was, it was a huge challenge, but it's very fun to do. Excellent. Now, you've written for various magazines, mm -hmm. out, Advocate Unzipped, and you do your own blog. You've done your homework. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have two blogs, and I'm very bad about keeping them up. If you want to find out more about canned ham or your blogs, how can they get a hold of you? The easiest way is tomjudson.com. There's a link to everything else okay. that I do, the different blogs. There's also an email link. Cool. Facebook, like of course. Facebook, the Twitter. Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I have a Twitter account, but I don't, I don't actually. I'm bad much. I'm like, oh, I am at, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I have lots of followers, but they're never, they're never here for me. <laughs> We're just waiting. Are we tweeting? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Well, I know I'm looking forward to the show this weekend. I am too. And everyone else is. Well, thank you for doing this. This thank is absolutely you, wonderful. Great pleasure. Well, I'm Eric Russell, and I have been out and about at Richmond Triangle Players with Tom Judson. If you want information about upcoming shows at Richmond Triangle Players, it's rtriangle.org. And you never know when I turn up next. So catch you next time. See ya.